Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Um, this week I'm going to be talking about games with bots in their multiplayer. Specifically first person shooters slash third person shooters. Um, I'm not a big online player. I'm not. I, I don't really play online any games anymore. Um, last time I did that was 10 years ago. Very, very, very long, very long time ago. In fact, um, I just, I just don't anymore. Um, yeah, sod it. <laughs> no, I don't play games online anymore. Um, I'm yet to find stuff I want to. Most of it's just free to play crap or multiplayer modes that's just not very good. But, back in the day, to compensate for either a lack of online play or a lack of this, that and the other, I used to play games with bots in their multiplayer very, very heavily. Um, it began with stuff like Time Splitters, it began with stuff like Conquer Life and Reloaded, games I picked up for like two or three quid um, back in the day, um, which are now considerably more now I think about it. Um, I'm playing like local multiplayer games like Halo 2, Halo 1 uh, with friends of mine uh, when they could be bothered to come over. But anyway, as a result, I kind of moved into online play back in 2009. Um, and it really began with Gears of War 2. It's kind of the first major game I played online that wasn't Halo 3. Um, and this was kind of the first game with bots in it that I played the multiplayer of quite extensively. Not necessarily just the bot match. When I did play extensively just the bot matches was Shadowrun. Now Shadowrun is a unfaithful adaptation of the RPG. Um, you know, you probably know it more nowadays for the trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. Shadowrun trilogy um, of RPGs done kind of in a CRPG style. Back in the day there, it was a mm, mediocre Counter-Strike clone. Now, I'd already been playing Counter-Strike on the original Xbox for a while, not online because original Xbox. But there was something about this game that was immeasurably appealing. The fact that it gave you magic abilities, even more so. Big fan of that huge fan of that and it kind of this game is along with Gears of War 2 was kind of what kicked off my love of games with bots in them um and how in the grand scheme of things I'm quite happily go back and play bot matches I can't say I'd go back and play a lot of online shooters or whatever nowadays as I just don't find them as fun like some of these games, like the Gears series, um, kind of kept the ball rolling with bots up until Judgment, and then they ditched it for 4 and 5, I believe. Um, or at least when I had an Xbox One, they didn't have it at all. As a result, I just kind of fell back into into older games, like um, Killzone 2 and 3. I've played the bots on those a little bit. Um, I even bought Killzone Mercenaries for the Vita, and I bought the bot mode for it. Um, because that was a expand, but you had to buy that separately. It's very strange. Um, yeah, it's very rare I get to talk about the PS3, including Haze. Um, Haze is dreadful, but a big part of why I like it so much is the fact that it has, it has bot matches, which considering it's from the developers of, well, it's from Time Splitters. It's from the guys who made Time Splitters. Of course it has bots in it. <laughs> I just never really thought of it at the time. Um, another game I picked up around the time, Perfect Dark Zero. Yes, I know that isn't necessarily the pack. That's not really the plastic casing for it, but it's falling apart. Or whatever. But I really got into playing bot matches. Really got into playing bot matches, especially on the original Xbox and on the 360. To the point where I started going... I wonder what other systems have decent bot matches. Like, are, are there ones on, say, more modern systems? Are there ones on older systems? <laughs> are there ones on this current system that I'm playing it on? Um, Brink, for example, is not a game you will hear anybody talk about anymore because it's tremendously ugly, bombed massively, 
And I followed every stage of its development because they went, yeah, it's bot match. It's bot. Multiplayer. They went, great. Sold. <laughs> Bought it day one. And uh, you know what? Don't regret it. I really like Brie. It's solid. It's just not very good. <laughs> it's not very good. But that was kind of a running theme for that era in gaming. Um, stuff like Enemy Territory, Quake Wars. Not very good. Um, really didn't pitch, really didn't capitalize on how popular like Quake 3 or um, Unreal Tournament or even Unreal Tournament 3 were at the time. Didn't capitalize on that at all. Kind of went down a completely different route. Really focused on um, enemy territory Wolfenstein's style of gameplay. Um, except they made it Quake, which um, I first played this on PC and that was my first instance of, while running a bot match, um, was my first instance of in-game advertising. There was just a big old poster for I Am Legend with Will Smith on it. And I was so convinced it would spawn in, in this version that I showed my friends. I was like, yeah, just look at this. Just look at this poster for like 20 minutes. And no, <laughs> it never, ever, ever spawned. And they were not happy about it. They were not happy about it at all. But um, yeah, also by splash damage. Similar to Brink. Um, nowhere near as manoeuvrable as you are in Brink, but um, still a lot of fun. Of course, the kind of king of bot matches back in the day were, of course, the Battlefront games. Um, that's kind of around the same time I started playing them. But then I found that the original developers had done Lord of the Rings Battlefront. Now, Lord of the Rings Conquest is not a very good game. Uh, most of these aren't, unfortunately. Most of these bot match games aren't great. Or well, they didn't really do anything particularly new. Um, but you know what? I still have a real soft spot for these kind of games. These kind of really janky, really bad, in a lot of ways, really, really freaking terrible games that are still a great deal of fun. Um, I mean, hell, I got really into Unreal Championship 2 back in the day. Did not get this down before I, uh, before I started doing this video, but you know what? Yeah. Different. Different. But similar in, similar in style to this. More melee focus. Very strong melee focus in Unreal Championship 2 um, and in Lord of the Rings Conquest. In Conquest, it's a bit different. Um, I don't typically use a melee class. I tend to play as a wizard or an orc mage or whatever the hell I particularly fancy being. Um, occasionally Saruman, depends. But this game tried and failed miserably <laughs> to capitalize on how popular Lord of the Rings was at the time, a good six, seven years after the movie's finished. So, a bit late to the party there. In fact, I'd argue probably one of EA's last major, last major games of that ilk, um, alongside, I think, Aragorn's Quest. Um, yeah, also dreadful, dreadful game. But Conquest was different because it had that kind of Battlefront style gameplay, but it, and it had all of these different characters you can play as, including the Balrog and Sauron, which is extremely cool. And there's nothing quite like finishing the evil campaign while smacking through the entirety of the Shire. <laughs> but at the same time, a lot of these games, even with bots, and especially with bots, really, really rely on online multiplayer, which is a shame. Stuff like Brink, stuff like Enemy Church Quake Wars. Even, well, especially stuff like Unreal Tournament 3, which was kind of the last... Yeah, sorry, I'm going to die on that hill. It kind of, alongside Gears 3, the last good game that Epic ever made. And yes, screw Fortnite. Um, screw Fortnite big time. Terrible game. Awful. Boring. Extraordinarily boring. And yeah, I played it. It was crap when it came out, and it's crap now. But it's games like Fortnite that kind of killed the bot games kind of killed that genre of playing games with... It's so 
difficult to find games like that nowadays. I mean, I'm surrounded by a big old pile of them at the moment, um, including this one. Um, Section 8 was interesting. Section 8 kind of did something different. Uh, it was Timegate Studios and South Peak Studios. But Timegate Studios, back in the day, um, they were running this. This was their big flagship series. It was basically a case of, yeah, you plummet out of orbit, crash anywhere onto the map that's not covered by an AA gun, and, you know, it added a really dynamic style to the combat. Even the bots, even the bots were very, very dynamic. And very good, and it was just kind of fun seeing what was ostensibly, I, I don't know what the closest approximate game like Section 8 would be, probably maybe Tribes. Um, that kind of really fast-paced, big, bulky, power armor, bang, bang, shooty, boop, boops. Um, different classes to switch out on the fly, different weapons, different this, different that. Um, you could switch instantly, um, you could drop mechs from orbit, it was it was cool. You don't get that nowadays, <laughs> you don't get games like that nowadays because there's no money in it. All games have to be an online only experience, or they have to be pay to win, or they have to be crap. You can get that back then. Um, even older, you didn't get games like that back in the day with stuff like Outrigger, another game with bots, but more of a Dreamcast-style shooter. Um, another one would be Heavy Metal Geomatrix. One I picked up recently that is very bizarre, um, Spawn in the Demon's Hand. I really like Spawn in... Like, I, I, I liked Spawn Armageddon. I picked this up last year. Still haven't played it. Um, still haven't played it, but very similar in style. That kind of bot-focused mentality, I think the view is bots are very difficult to program, they're very expensive, and they're kind of a time sink for games that don't really need it. Um, I bought maybe two or three games on the la this and the last generation that actually had bots in them, and those were a game that's not out physically yet. Fingers crossed soon. Pretty please. Pretty please. Um, that would be Hypercharged Unboxed. Hypercharged Unboxed is a very, very solid um, shooter that came out, I think, last year. Might have been the year before. Can't quite remember. But it's a very solid first-person shooter. I believe they've added a campaign in recently. Full-blown bot matches. You're pl it's basically Small Soldiers, the game, um, but not, you know... Small soldiers, the game. <laughs> it, it's it's basically like, hey, what if Toy Story with guns? And it's hot fun. Um, I need to play it again because it's been a hot damn minute, and I wouldn't mind in the single player. Single player would uh, be pretty solid. But yeah, really solid game. The only other two I've been able to find, to be fair, are Insurgency Sandstorm, which is not a game I would normally pick up. Um, it really, really isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. It, it reminds me of playing games like Medal of Honor Rising Sun, um, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, Ghost Recon Island Front, I think it was called. Um, yeah, kind of those, kind of this generation, 6th gen, kind of military first person shooters that kind of suck. Um, it's not, it's not terrible. If anything, it's, it's probably got more in common with, say, I don't know. I don't know. Probably got more in common with, say, Graw and Medal of Honor of this gen. With its bot matches and its, um, kind of very standard gameplay. Um, by contrast to kind of the final game that I'm going to have a chit chat about. Uh, this is a game that I've been avoiding like the plague for years, um, because quite frankly, it, on, well, on PS4, on Xbox One, it was online only, which I don't play online only games at all. None. I own one. 
<laughs> and that's Planet Ring on the bloody Dreamcast, and that's only because, well, it's free to play if I ever log the Dreamcast online again, which I never have, so we'll see. But this came out, this was announced for Switch three years ago now, and it had all the content, it had all the DLC, it had all of the units, I suppose, classes, whatever you want to call it, and more importantly, had a fucking offline mode. And here's the kicker, it was the first game I bought from EA in 10 years. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborhood Veil Complete Edition. This game is a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of fun. And it does kind of make me go, maybe I'm missing out on some really fun style of gameplay. But I mainly play this for its bot matches. I don't go online. I, there's no co-op mode to speak of, which is dumb. But it's a very, very, very solid game for the Switch. Um, I think the only other game on Switch that I have bots for is... I want to say Quake. Um, I want to say Quake, as well as, obviously, Hypercharged. Um, but this is an extremely solid game. Freaking weird. But you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Team Fortress 2. And I played the ever loving crap out of that back in the day. Even the Xbox. I played the Xbox version. <laughs> and that didn't have bots. But that was at a time where I was kind of doing both. Bot matches were something I indulged in, but also went online with stuff like Shadowrun. I went on I went on Shadowruns online a lot back in the day. Um, never won. Would like to stress mostly ran bot matches, but you know what? I liked that. It's kind of the same with this. It, it reminds me of that era in gaming that I really, really freaking miss. Now I know. Every single generation we go through. Oh, there's too many extreme sports games. Oh, there's too many 3D, uh, 3D crap platformers. Oh, there's too many um, first-person shooters. Oh, there's too many open world, and now there's too many free-to-play shit. Yeah, I agree. Um, maybe I'm now of that old fogey generation where it's like, oh, I, back in my day, things were better. Things were better on my generation growing up, blah, blah. Mm. Not really. But bot matches do take me back to times like that. There's still fun to be had in playing stuff like, say, Shadowrun or Plants vs. Zombies or cracking out Team Fortress 2 um, bot matches, which are, they're dreadful, but they're still solid. There's, there's a fun to be had mindlessly slaughtering crap loads of computer generated opponents um and i think that's something we're we're losing we're losing that big time i'm trying to find what games i can i picked up kid icarus uprising um a big factor of that was obviously it's it's single player but off it, but to be fair when i had our bots in it i went for it oh my favorite metroid game is metroid prime hunters because it's literally just quake 3 um and I only play the bot matches, so I don't do the main campaign. And you know what? Okay. It's solid. Um, a big part of why I picked up Star Fox 3D is because it has bots in its multiplayer. It, it's all stuff like that. It's all stuff like that. It, it's... A little sad that stuff like that isn't done anymore. Bots aren't in multiplayer modes, but at the same time you know why it's just kind of a long lost era of, of gaming for me but I find it where I can I play it where I can and I go back and play all the games that I kept so either way I've still got I've still got access to them <coughs> there's so many on the N64 that I didn't even talk about Turok Perfect Dark um, Duke Nukem Zero Hour kind of stuff like that you know, they're on there. They're out there. Hell, I bought Duke Nukem. Th well, a friend of mine. I asked a friend of mine to get me Duke Nukem 20th Anniversary World Tour strictly because it's got bots in his multiplayer. That's it. And you know what? I don't feel bad about that. I don't feel bad about that. I feel good about that. That's why I play these games. But yeah, that's it, guys. Bit of an unpopular opinion. I think bots in multiplayer are 
not a necessity, but certainly um, certainly spice up a game, and I prefer it to playing against real people every now and then. Um, more so over the last ten years, but maybe that's because I'm an antisocial bugger nugget. Anyway, <laughs> that's me signing off for another week, and I will catch you next time.